The more I use the Mixing Station app, the more I love it. I'm not exaggerating. Yesterday, I tried something for the first time and it was like magic, incredible. So if you're one of those people who, for whatever reason, you don't like the Mixing Station app, maybe what I'll show you in this video will change your mind. I'm doing all this on my phone, by the way. I'm mixing on my phone and I'm using the free version of the app. On the M32, X32 consoles, you have eight DCAs. On the Wing, you have 16. On the X-Air series of consoles, you have four DCAs. Now, you may think that it's enough or not enough, but what if you could add an unlimited number of DCAs? Sounds too good to be true, right? The Mixing Station app allows you to do that, and you can do much more with it. But first, let's just recap what's a DCA. In the old days, with analog consoles, you had something called a VCA that stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier, so you basically assign channels to a VCA and it will sum them all together and then you would raise or lower the fader of that VCA and it will change the voltage, making all of them louder or all of them quieter, as if you are moving all the faders together. Then digital consoles came along and now we have a DCA that stands for Digitally Controlled Amplifier. It's just like a VCA, but it doesn't combine the channels. It keeps them separate and it does the same of lowering or raising the volume, basically the post-fader volume. On the Mixing Station app, you have something called an IDCA, which is a virtual DCA. So remember I told you a DCA is as if you are raising and lowering the faders of the channel, the IDCA actually raises and lowers the fader. You can see them moving. This allows you to control groups of channels or just one channel, or maybe not to the main left and right because the DCA is only for the main left and right or any post fader bus or subgroup. This allows you to control sends. So if you have the vocal channel going to the delay effect, you could make an IDCA to control the send of the vocal to the delay. You have it all the time in front of you, just like the Behringer Ring, you could do a custom fader that controls something else. I'm in the Mixing Station app and I'll click and hold on a layer to open that layer. And I'll click on the plus icon on the top right. And I'll create first a blank element. This is just a separator. And then I'll click again on the plus and I'll create an IDCA. Now this is the page where you assign things to that IDCA. But before assigning anything, this is pretty important. Target mix, it's set to any. Any means that if if you are in the main left right or if you are in the bus sense or effect sense or any kind of sense, this IDCA will affect the levels of the faders that are going to that bus. I don't want the same fader to control the level of any mix I'm in. So for the first use case that is a normal DCA, I'll go to the target mix and I'll select left right and hit yes. It says that this will deselect the channels. So if you assign channels beforehand and you change the target mix, it will remove all of them and you'll have to assign them again. So do this step before you assign anything, so you don't do the same work twice. I'll assign all the instruments to that IDCA, and I will call it music. And I'll change the color to something like that, and go back. The separator is not necessary, this is just for organization between the normal faders and the IDCA. And if I move this one, you can see it moves all the faders proportionally. So if I have something like that, something like that, this red marker shows me what is the highest level and what is the lowest level. So if I go right here, I know even if I'm not seeing these faders, I know that I have something that reached the top just because the top part of this red bar touched the top. And this moves all of them proportionally. We're not done yet because if I hit mute, this will mute all the channels. It will actually mute it. And if more than 50% of the channels are muted, this will show the mute button right here. So if you click it, it'll unmute it. If you click it again, it'll mute all of them. So just be careful of that. Now we're not done yet because there's something else. I'll click on the label of that IDCA and go to the fader mode. Default is default, so if I have something all the way down, like so, and I bring the IDCA up, it will lift it with it. See, these faders are moving, although I had them all the way down. However, if I go in here and I set the fader mode to ignore minus infinity, which I prefer to do, if I have some faders down there and I raise this, it will not bring it up. So if I have these down here, see? 
it doesn't affect the faders that are all the way down. It leaves them alone, and that's good. I want that. Now, the second use case, I'll go to the other layer or the microphone, and I'll press and hold on the layer and create a separator, which is a blank element, and I'll create an IDCA, and I'll call this one vocal verb, vox verb. This will be the hands of the vocal microphones to the reverb. And I'll also ignore minus infinity. On the fader mode, ignore minus infinity. The target mix will be bus 13 because this is where my reverb is. So I'll select the vocal microphones and I will go back. And this, you can see it, it has the color of the bus. So if I change the color of that bus number 13, I'll go here into the scribble strip and I'll change the color of that bus. You will see that it changed the color because I have sends on faders background. This is as if I have sends on faders for that bus. So I know that this IDCA is a send controller. It's not a normal DCA. You can't see a fader because there's nothing sent yet. If you look in the bus, all is minus infinity. So I'll send some. And if I raise it and lower it, it will change the level of the sends for these channels for that bus. Even if I'm not in the bus. So I don't have to be in the sends on faders. That's the cool thing about it. I can just be mixing normally for the front of house mix and bring in and out the reverb. This is changing the sense. I'll go into it right here. See? Even if I'm not in it. And that's great. You can do another one for delay. Maybe you like to do delay throws. So I'll add an IDCA and I'll call it Vox Delay. And I'll send it to bus number 14 because that's where the delay is. And I'll only put the first vocal microphone on it. And I'll also ignore minus infinity. I'll remove the blank element because there's no more space on the screen. So I'll hold and press on it, then delete. Now you can see box delay. And it's the same color of the bus. I'll again change the color of the bus so you can see it. Bus number 14 right here. I'll set it to green and go back to that layer. If I go to bus number 14 and send the vocal channel to it and go out of it. Now this is all the time the send of Vox 1 to bus 14. No matter if I'm in the sends on faders or no. That's really cool. Now, I made the mistake, actually. I'll click on Vox Delay on the label and set the fader mode to default because for the delay throws, you actually want to bring it in and out. You don't want it all the time. So if I go all the way down right here with the send and I bring the IDCA up, it will bring it up from minus infinity. If I ignore minus infinity, it will stay down. Like in this case, if I bring this all the way down, see, it will not bring it up. It has to be up a little bit to catch it. But for delay throws, I would like for it to pick it up from minus infinity because I'm bringing it in and out. But we're not done yet because here's the really cool thing I want to show you. This is for live streaming. If you have someone that is operating the live stream and I would like to have a slightly different mix. For example, when you have a person that is talking in the live stream, they should be louder than they would be in the room just because how streaming works. If you make it as loud as it should be for the stream, it will be too loud for the room. So if the live stream needs a different mix, you could give them a bare bones version of the app so you can delete all the layers for them. Go here, layers, and I'll delete all the layers. Delete, 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 delete. And I'll keep one layer and I'll make all the buses invisible. I'll remove all the buses for them. Remove everything. All the app has right now is one layer. And on that layer, what I'm going to give them is only IDCAs. Here's how it works. I remove everything from here and I'll delete these and this one. Okay, this is a blank layer right now. I'll create an IDCA for each instrument. I'll call it Piano. I'll make it yellow because the piano is yellow and I'll assign to it piano. And the target mix will be the bus that is going to the live stream. So that would be a pre-fader bus. I'll select bus one. Yes, it deselected the channels because I changed the target mix. So I'll have to reselect these. And this is now the fader that is sending the piano signal to the bus that is going to the stream. I'll create IDCAs for the other instruments. I'll do it quickly. Target mix, the same target mix that is going to the live stream. And you can do all the vocals together or just the lead vocal alone and the background vocals alone. That's up to you, really. Now, if I go back, these are IDCAs for the sends of these channels or groups of channels to the bus that is feeding the live stream. So your live streaming person doesn't have access to your mix. They only see what they need to see to make it sound better in the live stream. It can either be a pre-fader bus or a post-fader bus. In my opinion, if the person that is doing the live stream doesn't have a lot of focus to mix, then give them a post-fader bus. And if they need to change the level of something, they will just change the fade. 
leader because otherwise they would have to do the balance. You can also do that for band members so they can control their monitor mix without risking screwing up your front of house mix or changing something that they shouldn't do. So you give them the control faders, the IDCAs that they want to control in their bus and they don't have to worry about going into the bus and into the sands and out of the sands. That will be their control. It's really simple. And that's it. So as many DCAs as you want, as many sends controls as you want, live streaming, that's great. That's amazing.